where are all the monopoles? What happens when you break a magnet in two? Do you get two magnets, one north and one south? Two so-called magnetic monopoles? There's nothing in physics, classical or quantum, that says you can't. And yet, we don't see that. We break any magnet in two. We don't get isolated north and south poles. We get two north poles and two south poles. And yet, if you ask a particle physicist which particle they'd most like to find, the answer is a magnetic monopole. Monorail, monorail, monorail. A magnetic monopole is a hypothetical elementary particle, one that can't be further subdivided. Such particles would be isolated north or south magnetic poles. These particles have been hypothesized since 1931, when the eminent physicist Paul Dirac showed that if magnetic monopoles existed in the universe, then all the electric charge, which we observe in the universe to be quantized, must be quantized. This is called the Dirac quantization condition. Since we do observe that electric charge is quantized, we have reason to believe that perhaps there should be magnetic monopoles in the universe. Remember, we just need to find one. Since Dirac's iconic 1931 paper, several systematic searches for magnetic monopoles have been performed. So it remains an open question whether monopoles exist. Advances in theoretical particle physics, particularly those developments in the so-called grand unified theory, the theory that seeks to unify the strong and weak nuclear forces with the electromagnetic force, or even in the theory of everything, which seeks to unify those three forces and fields with the theory of gravity, making a so-called quantum theory of gravity, they have yet to be found. In fact, the late great physicist Joseph Polchinski of University of California, Santa Barbara, said one of the safest predictions about physics not yet seen is the existence of a monopole. Now, why do physicists want these particular presents? It's because both the grand unified theories and superstring theories are perhaps our greatest hope for unifying all the laws of physics into one master equation. As past guest Michio Kaku said, perhaps only one inch long that he calls the God equation. Because that's an experimental problem. In other words, it's your fault. Right. <laughs> Magnetic fields and electric fields are interchangeable in Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism. So what happens when you break apart a magnet into two? Do you get one North Pole and one South Pole on the same magnet? Or do you get two North Poles and two South Poles? Let's do it. Yeah. No, you get a North Pole and a South Pole and a North Pole and a South Pole. The question is why? Now, the first systematic search for these types of hypothesized particles using modern day technology took place in 1982. It was Valentine's Day at Stanford University and physicist Blas Cabrera had undertaken an incredible experiment with ultra high precision to search out for these elusive particles. He took a loop of a superconducting material, he put it in an ultra low magnetic field container and he monitored the current that was induced through this loop using what's called a superconducting quantum interference device, or SQUID amplifier. What Blas was able to do was search for individual quantum units of magnetic flux induced in the superconducting coil. And on Valentine's Day 1982, he found it. A single event consistent with one Dirac unit of magnetic charge. The monopole had been found soon after. Rumors spread of Blas's discovery like wildfire. And in April, the organizers of a workshop on grand unification phoned Cabrera in Blacksburg, Virginia, where he was giving a colloquium. And they said, please come and address this workshop the next day. <laughs> After an all night drive to Chapel Hill, Blas electrified the audience. There was only one problem. After Blas reported his results, no one could confirm them. Whoa, whoa. Now, had Blas actually discovered the single monopole that exists in our entire universe? Well, Mother Nature didn't reciprocate the love that particular Valentine's Day. And little has changed in the 40 years since. But physicists are still searching. The answer may come down to that of beauty. But if we could unify together the laws of electricity and magnetism and, and find an instantiation of the magnetic charge in the same way that we know the electric charge exists, we'd have perfect symmetry between electric and magnetic fields. There's nothing in classical physics or quantum physics 
that says these things cannot exist. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If these monopoles existed, you could interchange the electric terms in Maxwell's equations with the magnetic terms. It would be perfect symmetry and so beautiful. So physicists don't give up easily in pursuing their loves. A team at CERN's Large Hadron Collider has recently established one of the most incredible mass limits for the still elusive hypothesized magnetic monopole particle. They did so by creating the biggest magnetic field ever observed in the entire universe. This collaboration, known as MODO, which stands for the Monopole and Exotics Detector at the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, using ions of lead colliding together, the experiment succeeded by producing a magnetic field with a strength of 10 to the 16th Tesla, over 10 to the 20th times bigger than the magnetic field here on Earth. The modal experiment uses what's called the Schwinger mechanism. Schwing, Schwing. This is somewhat analogous to the bright Wigner effect that we spoke about in a previous video carried out at the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider, or RIC experiment. The Schwinger effect technically involves the production of electrons and positrons, the antimatter analog of electrons. This electron-positron pair production is replaced in the modal experiment using decaying magnetic fields that could create magnetic monopoles and their antiparticles. So decaying electric fields produce electron-positron pairs, and the modal experiment's looking for the decay of magnetic fields, which would produce magnetic monopoles and their antiparticles. These experimentalists examine almost two billion lead ion collisions with a five tera electron volt center of mass energy per collision. This was carrying out in 2018 when they used a superconducting quantum interference device, the squid amplifiers, same ones that Blas Cabrera used in, in principle back in the Valentine's Day event in 1982. They used this as a magnetometer to scan what's called a trapping detector looking for the trapped presence of a magnetic charge. This charge, the monopole, would induce a persistent current in the squid to which they would be exquisitely sensitive to. Now, this would happen if the trap contained a magnetic monopole, or if the magnetic monopole actually existed. They looked for integer charges of magnetic field, and this magnetic charge, if you will, comes in so-called Dirac units, and they look for up to three of these Dirac units. And although no magnetic monopoles were spotted, the team did exclude the range of possible monopoles for all monopoles with masses smaller than 75 GeV, and that's roughly 80 times as large as the mass of the proton. So why don't we see these magnetic monopoles using the most advanced detector ever made by human beings? Could it be that as some theoreticians suggest, magnetic monopoles are simply too massive to be created by these ion-ion collisions, even using the most advanced collider ever made, or perhaps the most advanced collider that we can ever make? As usual on this channel, we don't mourn a result that doesn't make a detection. Some of those are the most important discoveries because they narrow the range for our theoretician friends and colleagues to pursue. I see this as an absolute win. Which then gives us tighter limits and we create a flywheel that we can then use to refine and hopefully detect something, but even if we don't, it's still a success. The future results will look for even larger ranges of magnetic monopoles. They'll deploy a new detector at the LHC to look for magnetic monopoles with higher and higher masses and higher and higher magnetic charges. Why don't we see them? Perhaps it's because there's only a handful, literally, as predicted by several early universe theories, there may have been many magnetic monopoles, but due to inflation, they really get inflated out of our cosmic observable horizon, so we don't actually observe them, even though they do exist. Leave your best guess in the comments below. And don't forget to sign up for my free twice-monthly Magic Monday message, where I share ideas from around the world of experimental physics, consciousness, the brain, and searches for extraterrestrial life in the cosmos. If you enjoyed this video about magnetic monopoles, I know you're gonna love this playlist that I've curated just for you. It describes the fascinating world of searching for other exotic phenomena just like the one you just enjoyed. Click here, and don't forget to subscribe.